Praise the Lord. It's good to see all of you. I know you're out there and watching. And uh, this is the day the Lord has made. It's Thursday evening and hopefully we're drawing to an end here pretty close so we can all congregate together and come back together. But uh, the Lord has been honoring what we're doing. And I just praise God for this time that we're able to teach the word. The Lord gave me a verse of scripture I've never taught on before, never even thought of teaching on it before, but I really feel like it's custom made just for you tonight. And so let's pray and ask God's blessing on this lesson. Father, I just thank you tonight for this time that we have together. Pour your presence and your anointing upon us because it takes the Holy Spirit to illuminate your word. It's not just gained through mental acuity. It's gained by the insight of the Holy Spirit to our spirit. I pray, God, that we will grow through this and that we will be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And this verse is in Acts chapter 9. And it's the story of the Damascus Road and Paul being converted. And we'll pick up the story at verse number 3. Acts 9 and verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. I want to concentrate on that sixth verse. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Arise and go to the city. And I want to speak to you on this thought about the next step. The next step. You know, with God, it's always a journey. It is a movement that we have personally to keep growing in God. If we ever decide that we're just going to pull back the reins and we're going to relax and slide back, we'll just backslide is what we'll do. But our life is a continuous challenge by the Holy Spirit to keep moving, to keep moving, to keep going forward. And especially in this time when we've gone through so many weeks of being disbarred, you know, from fellowship and not being able to come together and not having church like we normally do, we, we really find ourselves challenged to keep challenged and to keep moving forward. And so this, this idea here is the next step. And the instructions are, arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Now, he has just been converted. He's been knocked off his horse. He's been blinded, and he is absolutely trembling and astonished. It says he's trembling and he's astonished, and yet he gets an instruction on the next step. Now, God didn't tell him at that point, you're going to be of light to the Gentiles and you're going to write half the New Testament and you're going to do this. God didn't expose to him the whole destiny. God just gave him one step for one day. And we need to realize this is how God operates. But this is the way God speaks. He continually speaks and he continually asks us to obey him. Every time, every week that we've been you know, apart from each other. I can tell you the Holy Ghost has been customizing his messages to every one of our lives. And he's been saying to you, this is your next step right here. This is what I want out of your life. I, I know you can't go to church, but I know you love me. And here's your next step. And the step always requires faith. <clears throat> but it, it's not a complete picture. It's just a daily exercise and a command from heaven and a, a, a obedience in our life. Amen. And so we find out here that the Holy Spirit, the Lord, is speaking directly to Paul. 
And I think that one of the reasons why Paul immediately obeyed the Lord was because he was trembling and astonished. You know, sometimes it's good when life gets away from us. Sometimes it's good when we don't have a handle on things. Sometimes it's good when we feel overwhelmed and vulnerable. Sometimes it's good when we're astonished and trembling because then the Holy Spirit can speak and we will obey. There wasn't any doubt about what Paul was going to do. He was going to obey the voice of the Lord. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said, Arise and go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. So do the first step. Go to the city, and then further instructions will be given to you there. It's amazing how we get lazy spiritually, and we don't want just one word that will challenge us that we have to obey. We want the whole answer. We want to see the panorama of everything that God's trying to do. But what God wants is just daily steps of obedience. And God challenges us. He challenges all of us. You never get to a place. You may be to the age of retirement, but you never retire with God. You're always in his army. You're always his child. And you're always getting instructions from the Holy Spirit. Faith is movement. Faith is not lip service. You know, if Paul would have disobeyed this first command right here, he would have never become the Apostle Paul. Maybe he, he could have taken a, a different path. He might have thought differently. Well, if this is the way you're going to treat me, then I'm, I'm not going to follow you at all. I, I refuse. Nobody made Paul go to the city and wait for the next instructions, but he did. You know, I remember when I was uh, growing up in Denver and, and how that uh, when I was a young man, a senior in high school, my life was pretty normal as a young man, a teenager. And then when I my senior year in high school, God, I began to feel God giving me commands. I would hear the Holy Spirit speak to my heart. And as I began to obey those tuggings, those instructions, the Holy Spirit began to change my life. And little by little, in my senior year, I was called into the ministry. But it wasn't a one-time thing. It was just a tug at my heart. I began to see spiritual values over the physical things. I was active in sports. In my senior year, I dropped out of all sports, all extracurricular activity, and I would take my extra hour uh, when I had a study hall and didn't have anything to do, and I would get a pass and go to the gymnasium, which was empty, and I would get down behind wrestling mats and pray for that hour. What was I doing? I was obeying just one direction, one momentary command at a time through the Holy Spirit. As I did that, the Holy Ghost kept working with me. And by the time I graduated, I knew that I was called in the ministry. And I got my dad, who was a pastor, to help me get some meetings. And I went out and preached revivals as a 17-year-old teenager because I heard another word. And I want to know, I want you to know that I don't care if you're retirement age and you feel like your life is over. The most exciting thing in the world is to serve the Lord but it involves faith. You can't ever get to where you want to be just comfortable and relaxed and let alone. Because if you're going to be a partner with God, he's going to gouge you. He's going to prod you. He's going to prick your heart. He's going to make you get up in the middle of the night. He's going to give you a, a, a faith movement, something that will move you. Because if we don't move, we're just giving God lip service. What has God already spoken? I think many of you are hearing very clearly what I'm speaking about tonight. And God has already spoken to you some things, maybe one thing. And it may be deemed by you as a small thing, you know. It, it may be that the Lord will say, don't watch that next television show. Just get your Bible out and, and he'll, he'll prompt you a, a, a chapter in Proverbs. Read that chapter. I want to talk to you through that. I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me like that all the time. And I respond immediately because I know it's worth it to move forward in God. God has something good for me. And God has something good for every one of us. And especially if you are in a place where you don't see any victory and you're, you're being pushed and you're kind of in no man's land, high-centered, I really challenge you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are the commands for my life? What's the next step for me? What do you want me to do? You may be amazed at what the Holy Spirit 
will speak to your life. And this is played out throughout all the Word of God. Just like uh, Hannah. You know, Hannah didn't have any children. And the other wife, the other woman, vexed her and, and, and was, was uh, ugly to her in her spirit. And, and she finally, something on the inside of Hannah prompted her to make a move by faith on her own to go to the temple. You know, I, every time something happens that kind of pushes me or provokes me, I ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is this you? Are you asking me to do something new? Are you, are you calling me for a new faith act? Are you calling me to something that I'm not doing or not saying or, or, or not thinking? Because all of those areas, what you do, what you say, what you think, are areas that God wants to be able to trigger into you an act of obedience, a movement of faith. So she on her own, somehow she deduced that she needed to get to God. And she, she on the inside went on her own to the temple to pray. Why? She was vexed and saddened by this other woman that constantly goaded her. And she was barren and she couldn't have children. So she finally took it to God. But it was an act of faith on her part. God didn't give her a miracle till she moved by faith. And God won't make your life exciting and make you an overcomer and give you a testimony till you do something, not God. Draw near to God and God will draw nigh to you. And when she on her own accord went up to the temple and prayed, God heard her, God answered her, God gave her Samuel, and God gave her more children beside. I really believe that Hannah would have died a sad unhappy old woman without children unless she decided to move by faith. These things are so vital for us to understand about God. You know, God can do all the big stuff, but he needs us to do the little stuff. The little step that moves forward. What about the woman with the issue of blood? Nobody, no angel came and visited her and said on a certain day, God's going to do this for you and God understands your plight. She had spent everything on doctors and 12 years. She had had a blood condition that was killing her little by little. Her situation was desperate, but heaven didn't respond. Her situation was needful, but heaven didn't respond. She was in a dire situation, but heaven didn't respond until she responded. It was her faith, which was an act. And she touched the hem of his garment, and she was completely made whole. Hallelujah. You don't have to pray a big prayer. You don't have to do things in front of the church. You don't have to earn it. All you got to do is make by faith that statement and reach out. And she just touched him. And Jesus said immediately, who touched me? I felt virtue go from my body. Of course, because somebody with faith. I want to challenge you, you know, especially if you're vexed over something in your, your family, your marriage, your kids, or something in your finances, something like a weight hanging around your neck. Stop tolerating that. Stop going along just to get along. Make up an act of faith. Say, Lord, I'm going to spend... X amount of time with you every day and I'm going to pray on this and I'm going to see a breakthrough and you will. When you take it to God, God will make the second step and his steps are so much bigger than ours. Amen. How many times does it say, in Jesus seeing their faith? In Jesus seeing their faith. He could see it. Can he see your faith? Have you reached out this week in faith? Are you telling the Lord, I'm believing you for some great things? If you will, if you will, God will do mighty and wonderful things in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. My purpose is to keep striving and keep moving forward and keep accepting the challenges. Keep accepting what the Lord says. You know, it, God, God is so amazing. He, he, he'll tell you things sometimes that just blow your mind, and you're looking for something spiritual and something big and something this or that, and the Lord will just speak some little something, and you'll go, really, Lord? Is that what you want? Yes. And if you obey in that, you'll get more. 
See, that act of faith is obedience, and it manifests in the form of being able to see more. How many of us want to see more? We want to see more victory, see more joy, see things moving in our life. Well, then you've got it. It's your responsibility. So tonight I want to just challenge you and I want to pray with you. I want you to make that step of faith. Make that step of faith. Don't just go along and just same old, same old, same old. Do, do something different and push yourself, especially if the Holy Spirit's already speaking to you. Obey, 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 obey. There's no substitute for obedience. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, I ask you by the power of your spirit, I ask you by your Holy Ghost to move in the lives of God's people tonight. Challenge us and change us through the challenge. Help us to obey in the small things. Help us to obey in the small things that you ask us to do. Nothing replaces obedience, but we, if we will obey, revelation and knowledge, insight and understanding will come and we will grow together in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do your work in your people tonight. Encourage and lift and counsel your people. Show us the next step for our lives. Show us the step of faith that you're looking for. Every one of us need to move on in faith. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen and amen. I trust this helped you this week. God bless you. I love you, everyone. Before long, we'll be face-to-face -to -face together. God bless you.